Controlled Environment Agriculture Center at the University of Arizona. Aquaponics innovates worldwide. You're growing algae to feed larval shrimp. You may be a lot more interested to have a lot of protein in the algae. So you may want to go back. Early in my career, I was involved with growing fish and irrigation systems here in Arizona to use for irrigation of field plants. And then I began looking at marine systems. Uh, we first started actually down in Puerto Penasco in Rocky Point, Mexico, of growing shrimp there and seaweeds and halophytes. Later on, I expanded that in developing countries where we can get poor fishermen, poor farmers into a more efficient and more economically beneficial situation where they make more money growing fish or shrimp than they would growing rice. In 2004, I was invited to go to uh, Burma, Myanmar, uh, to look at the aquaculture industry there and how we could look at tilapia hatcheries, shrimp hatcheries, and make them more sustainable. Shortly thereafter, uh, the area, that region, was struck by the tsunami in December of 2004. Uh, a few months later, I went to Banda Aceh at the invitation of the government to help with the restoration of the aquaculture industry. And we wanted to work with the shrimp farmers and show them that by improving and replacing some of these mangroves, that they could actually improve the water quality and reduce the disease problems that they were having in their shrimp farms. Over many years, one of my uh, collaborating institutions has been the Central Luzon State University in the Philippines. And one of the professors I knew from there, Dr. Chito Sase, uh, was awarded a Fulbright uh, scholarship and he came here to work with us um, here at the University of Arizona, specifically on aquaponics. And aquaponics is a special case of integrating aquaculture with hydroponics, where we're growing vegetables, uh, things like cabbage, lettuce, bok choy, um, in conjunction with fish. He found that by putting this freshwater shrimp into the hydroponic bed, he actually improved the growth of the hydroponic vegetables, it improved the water quality, and now we were getting a third crop out of this system. So the more living organisms we will put to the system, I think it would add diversity and stability to the system. One of the reasons I'm so keen on the aquaponic growing systems is that it's very instructive to traditional farmers. When they walk into that greenhouse and we can pull up a floating board and they see all the roots suspended down in the water and they realize the only fertilizer that this plant is getting is the waste from those fish. And it clicks with them that, wow, you can grow these plants and that there's plenty of fertilizer value in the waste from the fish to get this lettuce plant or bok choy to growing all the way to harvest size. The other thing that's instructive is the intensity, how we can grow so many fish, so many vegetables in such a small area with water that's just going in a circle. So the hydroponics and aquaponics is more labor intensive than field culture, but we're growing so much more in such a small footprint. What we need to do for the rest of the planet now is to model that so that we can feed the planet without trashing it. Controlled Environment Agriculture Center at the University of Arizona.